A few years ago, I was so um, a angry, really. I was really angry because uh, some professor at the University of Chicago had said that uh, if the Zulu people uh, had any knowledge uh, worthy of knowing, uh, he would have known about it. Well, he didn't. And that is perhaps uh, one of the fundamental problems in the American Academy. But it's not only in the Amer American Academy, it is in the Western Academy. And to a large extent, it has influenced the African Academy, the Asian Academy, and the South American Academy. That is, uh, we find uh, professors in these universities in these different regions of the world who actually know very little about uh, African realities, African philosophies, African people, African history, African culture, and so forth. So my response, uh, actually, uh, was uh, to talk to my friends. Uh, at that time, they were both alive, uh, Jordan Kush Ingubani and Mazizi Kuneini. Uh, Kuneini had been uh, my uh, professor at UCLA, and Jordan Ingubani had become a mentor to me uh, while he was teaching at Howard University. And one of the things that I learned from them, uh, particularly about Zulu culture, was that it was rich, and not only was it rich, it was textured, it was uh, multidimensional. Uh, the word Zulu itself means people of heaven. And it was so incredibly uh, refreshing uh, for me as a person uh, to understand a particular uh, culture and a particular uh, people. Uh, but perhaps the most significant uh, aspect of my interactions with uh, Kuneni and with uh, Ingobani and many other people of the Zulu uh, ethnic group uh, may very well have been uh, Ingobani's gift to me of conflicts uh, of minds in which he uh, spoke to me and told me the story of how a young person who had arrived at puberty uh, would be called into the parents' home and would be given what would be called the Zulu Declaration. This declaration was one of the greatest rights uh, of uh, youth that I have ever heard or ever seen, uh, because the child would have to uh, listen to the father repeat what Zulu people always told their children. Uh, and uh, it would start off with the expression, I, and it would, it would say I, and then it would say I am, which gives a sense of existence. And then it would say I am, I am essence. Uh, not only am I essence, but I'm part of the divinity. Not only am I part of the divinity, but I am also uh, sharing in a community with my neighbors. My neighbors' desires and my desires are one. My neighbor's life and my life are intertwined. So it went from the individual to the collective. And I said, wow, this is a very powerful ethical instruction. And I took that ethical instruction as a part of the general corpus of African philosophy. And, and in the book that was published, uh, African Intellectual Heritage, uh, I included in African Intellectual Heritage, uh, this Zulu Declaration, just as an indication that uh, an expression so profound and so powerful, if you get a chance and you read it, Afro, uh, African Intellectual uh, Heritage, you will discover uh, that there is nothing more uh, profound uh, that has been written uh, than this Zulu Declaration. But remember this, when you read it, that uh, the Zulu are just one people of uh, hundreds, uh, maybe even thousands of ethnic groups in Africa. And each group for thousands of years has developed its own profound responses to the universe and to relationships. Thank you.